Two thoughts for today. Favoritism and faith. Favoritism. It's considered a sin. And faith. Faith without proof is dead. Let's look through some scripture to get a little more insight into these two things. Today we're going to be studying out of James chapter 2, if you would like to follow along. <clears throat> Verse 1, <clears throat> my brothers and sisters, believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ must not show favoritism. Favoritism, the act of giving unfair treatment to another person, or that you're showing partiality to someone. Suppose a man comes into our meeting wearing gold, a gold ring, and fine clothes, and a poor man in filthy clothes also comes in. The outward appearance of these two people are very different. One looks nice and the other looks dirty. Would you look at them or treat them differently? Think about it. Would you? Verse 3, if you show special attention to the man wearing fine clothes and say, here's a good seat for you, but to the poor man, you stand here or you sit on the floor at my feet. Have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Do their clothes matter? Does it matter what a person looks like? On the outside? Who made that person? Did that pay person say how they physically wanted to look? No, God created that person, their physical makeup. Now that person may change, decide on their clothes, but their actual looks and characteristics and traits weren't chose by them. But is it not what's on the inside that matters? To discriminate, to make an unjust determination about someone. So just because someone is wearing filthy clothes, we should not judge them any differently than someone who's wearing nice clothes. Are we judges with evil thoughts? If so, we need to change our ways. Listen, my dear brothers and sisters. Has not God chosen those who are born in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom of Christ? Kingdom, He promised to those who love Him. Heirs to the kingdom of heaven are those who are poor in the eyes of the world. Only those who love him will inherit the kingdom of heaven. The world loves itself, and those who love themselves, not God or others, they will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Six, but you have dishonored the poor. It is not the rich who are exploiting you, are they not the ones who dragged you into the court? Are they not the ones who are blasphemy, the noble name of him of whom you belong? If you really keep the royal law found in Scripture, love thy neighbor as yourself, you are doing right. But if you show favoritism, you sin and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. To show favoritism is to sin. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you do these things, you will be found doing right. For whoever keeps the whole law, yet stumbles at just one point, is guilty of breaking all of it. You can't pick and choose what sins you want to commit. You must strive to be sin-free. We cannot condone one sin as being okay. If we do, we're condoning all sins to be okay. 11. For he who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not murder. 
If you do not commit adultery, but do commit murder, you have become a lawbreaker. Speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom, because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy, to have compassion or show forgiveness to someone whom, with it is in the right of you, to punish or harm. When is judgment needed? So judgment should be followed by mercy. We need to be merciful. And we will be shown mercy. 14. What is good, my brothers and sisters, is if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds, can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and food, clothes and daily food. This example, without clothes, you would succumb to the elements, die of exposure. Without food, you would wither away and end up dying of starvation, and your body would just suck down. If anyone says to them, oh, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is that? It's just lip service. It's not good enough just to say nice things. We must do nice things. Exhibit good deeds. In the same way, faith by itself, if not accompanied by an action, is dead. What does that say? It says, faith without action is dead. But someone will say, you have faith. I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. Listen closely to what that says. That's verse 18. How can you show your faith with faith alone? We need deeds. We need actions. What we need to do on a daily basis is to show our faith. So, I will show you my faith by my actions. Let that sink in. You believe that there is one God. Good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. Some say, I believe in God. There's a creator. I believe in him. I'm a good person. God exists. He is the creator. But that's not enough. Just to say, we must do. Because even the demons can say that. We know God. He exists. We're scared to death of him. Be better than a demon. Show your faith with action. 20. You foolish person. Do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together. And his faith made complete what he did. His faith was made complete by what he did. Abraham believed in God, believed in God's request, had his faith in him, showed that faith by taking Isaac up, putting him on the altar in the process of sacrificing him. His action right there. Now God stopped him, but Abraham didn't know that was going to happen. Faith will be made complete when our actions support it. Think about your daily life, the things you do in your daily life. Are your actions speaking about your faith? Or are they contrary to your faith? Make sure your actions support your faith. 23, and the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. And he was called God's friend. 
We must believe in God, show our faith by completing actions that support it. This makes it complete. This shows righteousness. 24. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do and not faith alone. By what you do. God sees your faith by your actions. In the same way, was not Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in the other direction? Her faith in her actions. Her actions are considered righteous. A prostitute. Her actions were considered righteous. As a body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. Think that about that this week. Think about your actions. Make sure your actions show your faith. Take this with you. Your body without your spirit is dead. So is your faith without action. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you do for us, Lord. Being with us each and every day. There for us, we just need to reach out and pray to you, Lord. We have faith in you. And our goal this week is to strive to look and find and verify and work to make our actions support our faith in every way possible, Lord. We ask for your assistance in this task and praise your name. Amen.